Hello everyone, this is a video response to Sugarland Wren's Join the Atheist Brotherhood, We Have Cookies. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it was largely uh, a critique of my previous video, what the YouTube atheist community should look like. And it was a good, well thought out critique. Uh, many different angles on it. Um, and in order to top that, you know, have one really good video that's well received by many and then take a good criticism, I've got to make this video um, that much better. So thank you, Huck. Um, so I'm going to take everything that he said in his video and sidestep it and, and say one big answer to everything in his video is... <clears throat> to simply pose the question, what is the size of your community? Okay, you can put any modifiers and adjectives on that community that you want, but uh, here in context, we're talking about the YouTube atheist community. What is the size of your YouTube atheist community? Because there is a certain number of of interactions that you can have in the day. Meaningful interactions whereby you are fostering stable relationships with people. Okay? There's a reason why not everyone who watches The Amazing Atheist's videos feels like they have a connection with him, and that's because he cannot um, have genuine relationships in, in his comment section with everyone who leaves a comment on his videos. Um, he would be stretched to even respond to one comment from each of his subscribers in a meaningful way that would lead them to believe that he's fostering a stable relationship with them. Um, in the same way, you will notice that not everyone in your city is going to a coliseum on Sunday morning to worship because well, not only do, do they have differences in, in their beliefs as far as dogma, but it would be very difficult for one person to have personal relationships and, and communal ties with 50,000 people that might fit into uh, a soccer stadium. So if I were to make a video saying the ideal football team looks like this. I would expect people to take it as, well, a football team has a certain number of people. You can have the, the players on the field. You can have active replacements for them. You can have your inactive and injured reserve. You can have the coaches and staff and whatnot. But at a certain point, you'd start turning people away if they wanted to join the team because you simply had all of the team members that you need and if everyone in the stadium considered themselves part of the team and had to have the coach's ear for at least three meaningful minutes each before each game they wouldn't be done talking to him before the next game started and nothing would get done there is a maximum size to a community if the word community is to mean anything because you have to have as part of this community if, if it's a good one you have to have stable relationships relationships key word there so um, in psychology we would call this Dunbar's number and uh, it's uh, not a, a settled on number and it's it's unique to each person. Um, Dunbar said it was somewhere between 100 and 250 people that you could have meaningful relationships with, and he averaged it out at around 150. Um, other people that came after him, uh, they've used twice that number, and I would also um, go with Bernard and uh, say that it was probably... 300 or it is now because we we've gotten better at having 
a meaningful relationship with bo where both people are getting what they want out of it and maybe cutting some of the fat. Um, if you look at the size of people's Facebook accounts, if they're not using it to promote their YouTube channel or their website or their product, if they're only using it to stay connected with friends and family, you see an average of around 300 people. So, um, obviously they're not giving each of those 300 people 10 minutes of their life every day, but they are at least... Um, they're at least keeping up with what it takes to have a meaningful, social, uh, stable relationship with that person. Um, maybe they're calling their mom once a month, you know, but that, that mom is still their mom and she'll still send them a like on some uh, recipe that they post, you know, onto their Facebook page. But at least they know that their mother would show up to help if they if they needed a babysitter even though she lives across town that's still part of their community um, some of their friends would come running and, and uh, help out with a flat tire if they had a flat tire um, they could pass the hat and have each of their members of their community you know presented with that hat and at the end of the 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 request maybe come up with enough money to do something you know maybe help with the rent at the end of the month that would be a community okay those people that fit those roles if all that you require in order to to say that somebody is part of your community is that you watched one of their videos then what is a community to you? You know, what what use is that concept to you if you don't have more of a stable relationship with those people that you're letting in? So, um, part of Huck's criticism of what I was saying was that uh, I was advocating for the Ned Flanders version of Atheism Plus. Um harsh words but you know it 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 conveyed the message there that there would be some dogma to it and he he likes to be a lone wolf um and stray away from any group that has dogma um i would say yes yes i was advocating for the ned flanders version of atheism plus i was advocating for groups that uh create communities where they help each other out and have stable relationships. Now, in saying that, I, I am admitting that Atheism Plus, this uh, thing that a lot of us would say was a horrible uh, tragedy, Atheism Plus was a community and it served a purpose, and although a lot of us would uh, not like some of their dogma, there were actually people who did keep with that dogma and stay using their, their website, and stay using their forum. And you know what? That number of people that were keeping that little community alive called Atheism Plus was small. It was, by my estimate, under 300. This was a group of people that agreed on a set of norms. Now... Um, norms or or taboos or whatnot, uh, these are things that communities need, you know. They need to know, you know, a, a, as a, a minimum, you know, you're not going to hurt each other and you're going to have some common traits. And some people for their communities would find commonality in racial or uh, nationalistic things, um, but if you're going to use uh, community as, as a term to, to describe um, a group of people working towards something, that that's a community. If you're really going to put some value in that term, um, 
a good rule of thumb is to be able to make two subsections of whatever larger group they're a part of and, and describe them that way. And I would say a, an example might be this is the uh, Alcoholics Anonymous meeting for singles struggling with depression. Right? There's two steps down from just regular gr the, the alcoholics of, of your city. You know, you've got two steps down, two de descriptors. Um, and this is just a rule of thumb here, just two steps down. Uh, this MMA class is for LGBT women who are victims of domestic violence. Then you can have a group of people that you can actually refer to that group as a whole. Okay, and group as a whole dynamics is, is something that I deal with a lot as far as um, therapeutic groups. Because when you have a group that you're trying to work towards the goal of something together with, if you split say, a two-week period of time that you had with this group into thirds, right? And the first third of that group was being uh, used to give information to them on what is accepted in this group and what is the norms and what is expected of you if you're going to be part of this group. That, that portion of time is necessary to get to the point where you refer to them as a group. Okay, and Huck would use the criticism of this is indoctrination, um, but I would say that knowing the minimum requirements for interacting with each other is an important part of any group, and that's called norming, storming and norming, right? Um, then, uh, if you just look at the timeline of that group as being an arrow, and it starts uh, at the back with the feathers. And this timeline goes towards that point where, you know, that's the business end. That's where things get done. Um, where the feathers are, that's where not everyone is on the same page of music. Not everyone's with the agenda. And they all get brought back down to that shaft. You know, the thing that gives their emotion. Um, so... If you were to leave everyone as lone wolves, not understanding the norms, and then try to refer to them as a group, what you get is not a lot of oomph. Um, what would an arrow look like if it was only the part with the feathers? <laughs> it would look like when you try to use it. Um, but in coming together for a purpose... Um, after you have those norms, you can start referring to people as a group, as a community, okay? And, and like uh, Huck, actually in his, his video, like he said, not all Geminis pick their nose on a Tuesday, right? Not all YouTube atheist supervillains wear green shoes every day. Um, it's important to have a couple descriptors of your group that lets everyone in the group know what they're about. You know, what is their identity? If you're going to call it a community, what is the community identity? And if the community that you're referring to only has one little thing that, that, uh, they can refer to, and that's just one teensy bit of dogma, then you're going to have people who don't understand the norms of the group. Okay? In order to have a community, you have to have more than that. And so, the last thing I want to say is that, that video that I made about what the YouTube atheist community should look like um, it's it's better read as 
things for you to aspire to yourself rather than things to try to uh, push upon other people if they have not also decided to join your group and, and become part of that reciprocal compact of I want to have a stable relationship with you. Okay? Um, yeah. Thanks for the video response, everyone. It's linked in the description box. And uh, until next time that somebody picks my brain and makes me talk this much. <laughs>